We're still here in Melbourne and I uh, hope you guys loved Abby's hair and now we're going to do Emma's hair. So with Emma, uh, we had a brief chat about what we're going to do the haircut. I'm going to get it up off the shoulders, really focused on shaping the hair um, and pushing her into that sort of like curtain bang, sort of layered and trying to get some movement. Still looking a little bit triangular, so um, that's my goal with the hair. Cut and Jess is going to do blonde again. Yes, we're going to do some blonde, uh, make it a little bit different to what we did on Abby, but I'll show you a little bit later how to do that. Do you know now what you're meant to do when we say we're going to get started? Yes, I do. Let's go. I'm going pretty close with my foils. I'm using the Matrix Light Master and I'm using 20 volt to start with. One of the things that we have to be careful of when doing this is we've got some light and some brown in here already and I don't want to overlap on the already blonde bits. When I go through and feather down, I'm actually going to pick out the brown bit, move the blonde out of the way and then continue to paint down just so I avoid as much overlapping as possible. our last few sections now. Uh, just to reiterate what I did before, I have done back to back foils. Blue, started off so good. <laughs> just to reiterate what I've done, uh, slices through the front to make a little bit of a pop in money piece, but not like a thick one. We want just a, like a little cutesy one. We've done some back to back foils throughout the rest. So now we're finished with all our foils. We're gonna let this process and we're gonna tone. And then the next time you see Emily, she'll be with Adam. Wow, another beautiful color for me to cut. As you know, like, or don't know, I do color hair, but it's not something I do a lot in the salon. When I'm working for L'Oreal, Matrix, I'm expected to do color as all artists are. I just find that because I don't do it every day, I feel like it feels a little bit clumsy to me sometimes, which is why I'm bringing amazing colorists who sit people like Emily in front of me with the hair already done. So let's talk about the haircut. As I said, we're going to remove some of the length. You can see that the hair's been prepped. It won't be unusual for uh, people who've watched me before. I like to do a lot of cutting dry, especially when I'm not removing large amounts of length. One thing uh, that makes that attractive for me is when you're not making large changes to the length, I'm actually working with wrap dried hair so I can identify natural textures and movements and things like that, um, which help me create a wash and wear result. You hear me speak about that all the time. Wash and wear for me is not shampoo, condition, towel dry. Uh, spend 30 minutes styling, literally is wash and wear. So the whole idea is that Emily at home could wrap dry hair similar to what we've done, done it now, and she can leave the house and it looks great. Use a little bit of styling product, whatever. Um, and then if she needed to, it's not a prerequisite, she could just adjust the texture with either a brush or a styler, which you're gonna see me do later. So this is the process of this haircut. We're gonna remove some length because I don't want it to touch her shoulders. So we're gonna take about a centimeter off, we're gonna cut that dry. And then it's all about shaping the interior. So I'm gonna spin um, Emily around and we're gonna cut the back and then we're gonna move straight on to shaping around the front and layering it and doing some styling.
symmetrical balanced. Now we're gonna work on the shape in the front. Make sure my sectioning is perfect first. Balanced on both sides, tuck this back. So first thing I do, so I hold it in my hands and then I push it back. See how I push it back? I wanna make sure that this is balanced on both sides. We've got an even amount of hair. What I wanna try and do is make sure my first section is gonna be the guideline for the back. So everything is gonna come from the back to the front. So this is something that if you wanna measure, you can do this and go, okay, how's it gonna be? But from my experience, I like living on the edge. I'm just gonna guess. Don't know if Emily wants to hear that. I wanna create some short behind. And then you can watch what happens as I let this go. Now we take another rectangle, sorry, triangle, on the top of that. And as we've done, we've now created, in previous haircuts, now created a guideline. And we're gonna bring everything to that point until we run out of hair. So over directing it to the front. So straight away we've got shape here if we need it. If we're gonna style it that way. We've got volume in here and you can see it's now leaned it out. It's not as big a, um, it's not a triangle anymore. We're trying to elongate the hair. At the beginning I said, try and gauge the lengthy one in the back and make sure that that's the short point in the front. So now when I pull this back, I've already got my guideline for where I want my layering to be. And you can see that it's coming through here so I'm gonna use that as my guide and I'm taking a really big, generous triangle section. I'll just get you to face the back of the room for me so you guys can see that. It's like one, two, three, there's three points. And again, I wanna go short to long. So I'm gonna be looking for, there it is in the front, see that? Here. And again, we need to make sure that we're in the center of the head. There's my short point from the front. And then we're going to Again, go short to long, take that out. Now we're bringing everything back to the center, just like we did on the top. And because we've already layered the sides inadvertently, I'm not sure if you guys realized, but by doing that technique that we did on the top, you actually are layering the sides and some of the back. So you're gonna run out of hair needing, like needing to be cut in this section very quickly. So I would use this haircut, and I'm gonna actually demonstrate this in a series of videos I'm doing. I've been asked many, many times to do step-by-step -step tutorial um, and I'm gonna do it on mannequins so I can actually break down the sections, explain each section I do why, and so that um, the four or five signature haircuts that I guess you could say, if you wanted to use like an Italian analogy, it's like my red sauce base for then to me to make it spicy or put some beef in it or you know, mushrooms or olives or whatever. It's like, these are the, the haircuts I'm gonna show you are the four or the five base haircuts that I then go and modify to create different looks and shapes based on someone's lifestyle needs, the texture they like to see in their hair, how they like to style their hair, whether they wear it straight, wash and wear, whether they use an iron. Um, so this is not quite, but almost one of those, but, um, some of you guys out there like it when I talk and explain, some don't. So I figured rather than creating one piece of content, which isn't really a tutorial, but for some people, they're just telling me, Adam, just shut the fuck, excuse me, just shut the hell up. And just, I just wanna watch you cut hair. I just wanna see the before and after. I'm gonna separate the two and I'm gonna actually do uh, beautiful before and after videos with some brief explanation. And then I'm gonna do in-depth tutorials. So hopefully you guys will really enjoy that. But as always, leave a comment. Um, I do read them, um, and as I've always said, you don't have to like what I do, I take feedback on. Yeah, I don't proclaim to be perfect, keep going, babe. Um, yeah, and we'll go from there. So, as I did with the front, I like to cut away from my body when I'm putting the shape in, but then I like to come back and texturize the opposite way. I just find that I have a bit more control. You can see how dense that is. Super important that you don't go chopping across. You're gonna put big holes, you're gonna see them everywhere. You really just need to go straight down, very gentle, very slight, and only create some separation and remove some of the, some of the, um, the hair in between to create that separation.
because the whole idea of this haircut is to be versatile, worn in, seamless, and if you don't do that, um, it actually is uh, going to do the opposite. It's going to put texture in there, it's going to be heavy, you're going to see chunks, you're going to see cutting lines, and if that's what you're going for, that's fine. I'm not saying that it's bad, it's just um, not what we're trying to do here. That is the foundation of this haircut, but unlike the last haircut I did with Abby, where I use texturizing scissors, I'm actually going to show you guys a technique that I use to soften these ends with a straight blade. Now there's two ways. We can project the hair horizontally to create separation and we can texturize this way. Or we can project the hair vertically and texturize this way. I'm choosing to do this, the latter, because you guys have seen me do the horizontal and I find that this will actually give a lot more movement and texture in the ends. Looks so good. Head like this for me. That way. That way. That way. That way. No, no, no. <laughs> like tilt down See this what? way. Mate, this is real. Like this. <laughs> yep. Eyes closed. So I just spray on the inside, and then do the other way. There's something I do to teach my clients: is you just don't want that one little annoying hair tickling your face. I didn't know you that. Don't want, you don't want to put too much on top. So you just want to build the shape out. It's okay for it to be a bit flyway. It's going to settle down by itself. The way that I've shown you guys to do it today, if Emily comes back, spin back around, babe. If Emily comes back and says, Adam, I love the haircut last time. I want to do the same thing again. I've got a method and a technique and a formula that I used. The ends, this section, that section, tied it all together. So I can repeat this every single time with consistency. When you're using texture and slicing, does the result Look great, absolutely it does, but how can you replicate that again? How can you avoid retexturizing that hair again? So when Emily comes in again and I project the hair, I'm going to look at it and go, it doesn't need texture today. Because believe it or not, I don't cut everyone's hair all over every time. It doesn't always need it. She might go, I want to grow the ends a little bit longer, but I love my bangs. I can just take that little triangle, trim the bangs, we're done. So this whole thing that I'm leading into is these four videos that I'm going to be doing on my signature haircuts and why you know, there's a method to my madness. Um, over to Jess talking about the colour while I just play and... So just to recap on the colour, I wanted to show something where placement is very important. So we've done really simple placement of just bringing all the foils up to the part line and look how impactful that is. Like, that gives a good amount of coverage in terms of the colour. And then just a nice back-to-back -back slice to give us a nice amount of money piece, but nothing crazy big. Like, we just want something a little cutesy. So, yeah, I love it. I think that's great. I, I actually think the, the biggest benefit for me is the condition benefit. Yeah. You know, of, like, adding colour where it needs to every time. As good as some colourists I've worked with are, can you really, each time your client comes in, make sure you don't get overlap when you do an on-scalp? I mean, you can get close, but at some point you do need to overlap it, otherwise you're going to get a band, right? Yeah, that's right. So this is a great way of like giving the hair a break. There's enough blonde underneath, and it actually just looks like it's got a different dimension. It's got more texture. You can see it, like again, like we did earlier with uh, Abby, you can actually see depth in there, which is really good. So the can, like for blonde hair to be shiny and healthy, I mean, given, again, we've been using amazing products, so that's always a big help. It's, um, for me, condition is always what you should be focused on with clients and with clients. We just really need to, like, be mindful of the, the impact on the condition of the hair when we're doing um, clients' hair and, and then giving it a break. And I think that's, you know, maybe that's not what the intention was today, but what I got out of it from 
It looks great. She's still blonde. Big yeah. dick. Still yeah. blonde, big dick. Um, and as a hair cutter, blonde hair is very difficult to cut, especially short. And this wasn't difficult at all. It was not flyaway. It wasn't hard. And, um, yeah, it's like it, it conditions everything for me, so. Yeah. Well, what that's mean? why I showed in the video before, I showed out piecing out those brown bits and then lightening them to move away the blonde and then lightening over the top. So that way we try to avoid as much overlap as we can. You still, like Adam said, you're going to get some a little bit. It's inevitable, but yeah, I think it's right. You did a great job. Thank you thank so you. much, Jess. You thanks made for me having a beautiful me. canvas to uh, cut today. And thanks for coming and hanging out with us, Emily. I have fun. Um, if it's the first time you've seen one of our videos, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Go and follow um, Jessica on uh, Instagram. I'm going to put her little, you know, little scroll up here. Um, and go and check out, we've just um, had a hiatus from YouTube because we've been busy building a new salon. So please go and check out our, our salon page. It's uh, access underscore salon underscore CBR. Um, we'd love you guys to follow and support not just me but all the team there. Um, if you think someone might like to watch the video or benefit from watching it, please make sure you share. It's important as hairdressers. We openly share without any expectation and um, help everyone out where we can. Even if they just take one little bit out of anything that you see or do, um, it makes the whole hairdresser community a lot stronger. So um, that's the last sort of video from us here in Melbourne. Yeah. Next ones are going to be back at home. Oh. So uh, in the new salon. In, in the new salon. Um, so thank, thanks so much for tuning in today. Um, we'll see you soon, but from us in Melbourne, Australia at the L'Oreal Academy, it's see you later, mate.